Hi there, my name's Nate. I'm pastor of Jesus People SF. Wanted to do a brief like little explanation for what's going on with that David Wilkerson video. I heard you say uh, plot is groovy. Um, for those who don't know, David Wilkerson is kind of a um, celebrity in the, you know, kind of Pentecostal realm. I want to speak to you this morning about getting to know the Holy Spirit. And generally just anyone who likes really fiery preaching, or um, who is, uh, you know, just really into the power of the Holy Spirit. But multitudes today are being saturated with your okay messages. Uh, in preaching. Um, now, there's a video on our YouTube that uh, has been increasing in views lately. Um, and it, it's a video of David Wilkerson uh, confronting some hippie Jesus people converts. I heard you say plot is groovy. Um, now, I'm Pastor Jesus People SF. We uh, have focused our ministry on Haight Ashbury, San Francisco. Um, it's a neighborhood in the, the city where the hippie movement started. It's also the neighborhood where the Jesus movement really uh, took off in the United States, which was mainly, you know, young people and hippies who were coming to faith in Jesus. So I wanted to kind of just give a background for like what's going on with that scene. It's actually an incredible story. Highly recommend it. It's in this book, um, God's Forever Family. Um, so um, definitely like something to check out. Um, in God's Forever Family, this is the account that I'm going to read um, about this kind of situation. Um, but basically, um, David Wilkerson read this article, decided to come and visit them and just check it out because David Wilkerson um, made his career uh, public at least um, as a pastor by um, reaching uh, gangs in inner city New York City in like the 1950s. And then he wrote a book about it published in 1963 called The Cross and the Switchblade. And that became a bestseller, put him on the map. And so he became, you know, this very well-known evangelist. One visit that caused a particular stir was an exp expedition by Assemblies of God pastor David Wilkerson, author of the 1963 book, The Cross and the Switchblade and Head of Teen Challenge, an organization targeting street gang members and drug addicts. The increased use of drugs associated with the counterculture had opened a new dimension of, in Wilkerson's ministry. And he came to San Francisco intent on checking out the local scene for a new book and a film he wanted to show at his speaking engagements. After a quick stop at the living room, which was the name of the drop-in center, he made an appointment to visit the local communal house in Novato and showed up with a film crew in tow. Initially open to being in the movies, Wise and his friends, so uh, Ted Wise was the leader of this uh, drop-in center. Um, he was one of the, the main like converts says wise and friends enthusiasm quickly melted away under the hot lights and david and wilkerson's interrogation the pentecostal preacher asked him several questions about whether a hippie could come to jesus and still smoke pot or take lsd and then asked them if they were willing to tell hippies to stop all drug use cease and desist free sex and cut their long hair steve hefner recalled that wise said something to the effect of we can tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ and that when it came to cleaning up a person's life, the individual in question and Jesus could get together on that. The folks at the living room were not in that business. After Wilkerson asked, if the, group, asked the group if they practiced free love in their communal living arrangement, Wise and the others exploded and ordered them to turn off the cameras and to leave. That evening, Wilkerson called, apologized, and asked to make another attempt to interview down at the hate and offered a $100 donation as a gesture of his sincerity. Seeing him as repentant and convinced that they should forgive him, they agreed to meet him next day down on Page Street. Page Street is neighborhood is a street in Haight Ashbury where the drop-in center was, uh, the living room. The next morning, they found not only Wilkerson and his film crew waiting for them, but also a TV news crew from Channel 2 in Oakland. Channel 2 came in fil filming w Wilkerson, said Hefner, who was another guy in the uh, Jesus People movement, who was filming us. After taking the footage of the mission, they sat down with both sets of cameras rolling. 
Again, Wilkerson opened up with the same line of questioning. Initially, after initially playing along with the questions and joking about taking drugs during their Bible studies, Wise and his friends finally just stopped the interview and threw Wilkerson and the TV people off the premises. But the damage had been done. That evening, footage of the interview ran in the Bay Area, and the group heard reports that it had been picked up by a few stations across the country. Wilkerson then went on to a local Christian radio station to expose the hippie mission and contacted the editor of Christian Life about the dangerous group they were promoting. Wilkerson incorporated snippets of the interviews into a film that he showed in conjunction with his speaking engagements across the country in late 1968 and 1969. In his new book highlighting the perils of the hippie drug use, Purple Violet Squish, Wilkerson referenced his encounter at the living room. I had a shocking conversation with four psychedelic ministers. They told me they dropped acid, in parentheses, took LSD, before they undertook Bible study. They were especially intrigued by their study of the book of Revelation under the influence of LSD. One said, man, what a blast, even the beasts come to life. Under the influence of psychedelics, this generation of hippies is questioning the old truths of the Bible. They seek salvation in a pill. The flap over Wilkerson's accusations caused no little stir within the advisory board of evangelical concerns. As McDonald related the story, the board grilled Wise, Sands, Dupe, and Hefner on the accusations and assured by their denials issued statements that bluntly refuted the use of any hallucinogens or narcotics by the living room staff. But despite their pleas of innocence, McDonald later learned that regrettably there was some substance to the criticism. As Ted Wise remembered the situation, the problem was that the preachers had made the assumption they weren't doing anything. There was still a fair amount of drug use going on and marijuana was routinely touted at the Page Street Mission. One of the basic factors was that a social joint was an aid to evangelism. They gave me the opportunity to share the word, Jim Dupe later stated. Indeed, an unwillingness to smoke grass often proved detrimental to their witnessing efforts in those early days, as wary hippies were prone to suspect that anyone who would not partake in the counterculture's primary social lubricant was, quote, a narc, unquote. And drug use was not just happening down at the mission. Wise remembered one Bible study in particular at the house that McDonald had led, during which a neighborhood teen stowed away some grass in the, in the basement. Slowly, he recalled, people began to get up and meander downstairs where the pot was until McDonald was left practically by himself upstairs. Afterward, Wise felt bad wanting to explain to the Baptist pastor it wasn't his teaching, it was the pot in the basement. But according to Wise, they were ultimately not trying to pull a fast one on their friends and evangelical concerns. He had never asked, he said of McDonald. McDonald was, uh, of course, the uh, he was a traditional Baptist pastor uh, in uh, the North Bay of San Francisco uh, in Mill Valley, who was the main person who helped this movement get started as far as the drop-in center goes. Um, nevertheless, the group had begun to have some misgivings about the drug use by this time. One problem they encountered was financial. Early on into the start of their evangelical mission or evangelistic mission, they had decided on the basis of proper stewardship that they could no longer see their way to buying grass, would only partake of freely pro uh, proffered pot. We didn't have money to buy the drug, exclaimed Dim Jim Dupe later. In light of these circumstances, they felt that it, it was inappropriate to use God's money in that way. By the time of the Wilkerson visit, however, the principals at the living room had started deciding that other drugs were off the table as well. Rick Sachs related one incident from sometime in late 1967 that it was key to his own move away from psychedelics. One afternoon, they had finally had a breakthrough with an early frequenter of the Page Street Mission, one Stefano, who had finally accepted Jesus as his savior. Elated over this straying sheep, having been brought back to the fold, one of the extended members of the group said that he had just gotten his hands on some fresh acid and wondered if perhaps they should celebrate Stefano's, uh, Stefano's entry into the Lamb's Book of Life by taking some. They thought this was a splendid idea, piled into a car and drove out to Land's End on the west side of the San Francisco Peninsula, where they proceeded to drop the LSD and marvel at the wonder of God's creation. Rick Sachs remembered, I was in this little hole in the side of the cliffs just so stoned I couldn't talk. And I was watching God spinning clouds and imagining seeing his finger reaching down and touching the clouds and giving them a whirl. And God displaying his power and majesty for me. All of a sudden, Stefano gets up 
and he's about to jump off this cliff. There's a lot of cliffs that lands in. And I couldn't talk. I remember praying and saying, God, I realize I'm doing something that's preventing me from saving this guy's life. And I don't know what to do. Help, help him. So, and Ted started to talk to him and Ted talked him through it and Stefano sat down. And that was my last time taking LSD. It was then that I realized I couldn't do what God was calling me to do because of this thing. I thought I was going to get closer to God. Here I was as an ambassador with a job to do. Just as acid had become, had come to be viewed as bad, a bad, bad form among the group, the influence of their sustained study of the Bible and their contact with establishment evangelicals and probably their experience with Wilkerson gradually convinced them that perhaps their pot smoking also had to stop. Dan Sands, on the strength of scriptural exhortations not to be a stumbling block to others, began to strongly voice his concern that their fondness for marijuana was indeed stumbling their brothers in the churches. And as Ted Wise recalled, there was also a growing concern about the biblical injunctions urging Christians to be of sober mind, concerned with the fact that smoking grass was considered a bad witness in some people's minds. They decided it best that they change their ways. From that point forward, drugs were, for the most point, left behind. So that's kind of the backstory. Um, in the comment section in the YouTube video uh, about this incident, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, they're they're lost. You know, they're 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 not believers." And I think for for you all, I think you have to remember when you first encountered Christ, if you did indeed encounter Him. Um, your life didn't, uh, in every single aspect, transform instantly. And you have to remember that these hippie folks are uh, new believers. Um, they are fresh. And in, in many ways, they're different than uh, traditional evangelicals at the time for this reason, because they were keeping a lot of their culture um, as far as music and uh, dress um, and things like that. And that actually led to the Christian contemporary music scene. I mean, having Christian music on the radio is is an outshoot of Jesus, the Jesus movement. So, um, so yeah, even these these uh, the hippie believers end up uh, quitting drugs eventually. Um, with that said, you also have to understand a lot of these Jesus people came to faith while they were on LSD, um, and the the story behind that is is pretty incredible as well. Um, these are kind of like, it, it's not so crazy when you understand many people uh, seek the Lord after, you know, hitting rock bottom. Many of these people hit rock bottom while they were doing uh, drugs or whatnot. Um, but it, it wasn't always a direct result of the drug itself. It was kind of like a, they would have some kind of existential realization that they were sinners or something like that. And then they would begin to, to seek uh, the Lord's forgiveness. So, um, one other thing to remember is that even though these these uh, these hippie Christians, uh, they they don't have all their ducks in a row. Their their doctrines are bad. A lot of people have been posting um, the the word of Galatians chapter five that uh, there is the work of the flesh, which is pharmakia. Um, uh, in Galatians chapter five, there's the fruit of the spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. And there's also in Galatians chapter five, there is the deeds of the flesh um, that's coupled with that list. And one of the, the items on that list of the deeds of the flesh is uh, sorcery. Um, but the word is pharmakia, which implies, you know, sort of tampering with your your soul by drugs. Um, and so that's that's really what Paul's getting at. And I want to point out just because someone engages in that is not de facto they're saved or not saved, especially since uh, based on the account of Larry Eskridge, they moved away from it after this uh, this um, encounter with David Wilkerson. Also, no, I mean David Wilkerson confronted them. Um, you know, he's a pastor. He's he's called to uh, rebuke with all authority, is what Paul commands. Um, don't let anyone disregard you, um, because the, your authority is not you. This is this is the Bible. This is God. You are to rebuke as a representative of God. And it appears to have actually had its effect um, for a movement that was prone to still dabble in drugs. Uh, most of the Jesus people 
afterward um, were not as uh, prone toward it. They were they were pretty abstinent. So um, those are some just thoughts about uh, that that scene. Um, and uh, yeah, I am grateful for anyone who uh, has been watching and got a little bit more of the backstory. Um, as far as uh, just my particular ministry goes, um, would love to have people just reach out and just share, um, you know, if you were a part of the Jesus movement, if you were a hippie, um, love to hear from you. I'm really into the, the history of it all. Uh, it's not the most beautiful or, or perfect history, um, but I happen to believe the Jesus movement was a, a movement of the Holy Spirit. Um, someone who, who wrote on uh, the Jesus movement was a veteran of it. Um, he calls it the fourth great awakening of the United States because um, young people were inexplicably just swept into the kingdom during this time. So much so that even even Billy Graham ends up um, engaging on that aspect. So um, thanks so much. Uh, may the Lord uh, just give you wisdom in all things. May he open to you the light of his word um, as you seek to understand. And may you not prejudge. May you um, judge with right judgment, not as your eyes see or as your ears hear, but with righteousness, as Jesus tells the Pharisees.